Hey, doing YouTube. Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. Back to yet another review. And it is bourbon barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout Time. Come on now, sucker. In the form of uh, Port Brewing's uh, bourbon barrel aged sin as a little helper. Uh, never had this before. I've had its base. The only thing with its base, though, I've had it aged. Um, I had their aged uh, sin as a little helper. I want to say it was about three years old when I had it, maybe even older. And off the top of my head, I haven't watched Reaver Watch for review, but I remember coffee, chocolate, Russian Imperial Stout, pretty standard stuff. But I remember being like, almost like, it could be just my brain playing, mom playing tricks on me, a little fucking ghetto boys action. Um, I think I remember a little bit of spiciness there too. Um, but this is a bourbon barrel aged version, so we got a, a different beast going here. And I assume a relatively newer one. I don't see a date in the bottle. But this was sent to me by the incomparable Sean um, from the West Coast. He sent me out a humongous beer mail. And this is one of the bottles in there. I've been chomping on it a bit to give it a review. So we're going to do that right now. So buckle up, buttercup. Um, as far as what it says on the bottle, it says, Port Brewing, Santa's Little Helper, Imperial Stout, Stout Aged in Bourbon Barrels. Um, yeah, Port Brewing, yada, yada, yada. Here we go. Okay, everyone knows Santa delivers toys and gifts to little girls and boys each Christmas Eve. But what does he do with the sleigh over the other 364 days a year? Well, rumor has it he hitches up the reindeer each July, test driving the sleigh to ensure it's still in operating condition. At the North Pole, they mark their calendars calling it Christmas in July. How do we know this? Well, how do we know this? Well, Virginia... Each year, Santa stops by Port Brewing to load up his sleigh with beer for his return trip to the North Pole. He's a big fan of Santa's Little Helper, and for the late night, late nine months, our brewers have been extra naughty, aging some in bourbon barrels. Hopefully, Santa won't try to drink it all by himself, but we wouldn't blame him if he did. The brewers of Port Brewing. So there you go. Um, yeah, label's cool. I mean, it's Santa chilling in a fucking white beater and uh, Dorf, not Dorf, one of the L's, sorry, um, is uh, cracking a beer for him. And uh, Rudolph is uh, just in a pair of shorts, slamming down a shaker glass or something. I don't know. It's cool. You know, it's, it's a Christmas themed beer. We're trying to be Christmassy. Yada, yada, yada. Let's drink it and see what it has. So we'll see. I, I assume this is newer. Um, it just looks new. Like the, the labeling is pristine and it was just sent to me and Sean's from, from the West Coast. Um, ooh, not much pop on that whatsoever. So take that with a grain of salt. Now that, my friends, is dark. If you want to know the definition of dark, that would be dark. Um, yeah, super dark. Um, you got about a um, three quarters of a pinky, what I like my coffee that could look like color head. Um, nice creaminess to it, pretty compact bubble. There's really not much of a head there whatsoever to speak of, though, because it is an imperial stout that has been aged in bourbon barrels, so it just typically is not going to have much of a head. Eh, decent legs on it. You expect to have a little bit better legs going on there. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I see. I was looking at it wrong out. Nice cascading flowing legs on that sucker, so. Yeah, it's dark. That's my not professional opinion. Let's get a nose on it. I'm going to like it, first off. Not because it's barrel aged, and that's the thing. Um, let me use some barrel aged beers. Barrel aged beers are awesome. You know, they're fantastic. But a lot of people um, don't know how to barrel aged beers. Not that I know shit. I, you know, I'm not a brewer. Um, you know, I've home brewed before, but I'm not a brewer, so I'm not going to sit there and poop on somebody's fucking lawn about how they brew beer. But a lot of brewers just don't know how to barrel aged beers. Um, they either take the wrong beer and put it in the barrel, or just not know, not sure what they're doing with the barrel. When you smell this, you get that coveted barrel. That I, well, my coveted barrel. You get that. What I like to break down and explain as, if you were to take a barrel, a bourbon barrel, if you were to kind of grate cheese grate a little bit of the uh, char off, then kind of mix that with a, like a, a semi milk chocolate. And then kind of rub it with a little bit of fucking cherry. You know what I mean? Like a little bit of cordial cherry. That's the vibe I'm getting off. There's really fluffy, rich, deep kind of char. That's not overly charred to the point where it's burnt. And it's not 
overly bourbon towards biting me in the face. So you get a little bit of that imperial stout coming through. But the chocolate is the main thing in there. So you get a nice bit of chocolate, a little bit of that cherry going on, and just a beautiful berry character. So she smells the part. She definitely looks the part. She tastes the part. Cheers. Yeah. That doesn't suck. Um, first things first. Time. I'm not a huge proponent of aging barrel-aged beers for the long haul. Let's put it that way. I like them aged two to three years, give or take. Non-barrel-aged beers, I like to eat longer. Less moving parts, less to go wrong, just kind of makes sense. Um, this needs about a year. So I assume this is relatively fresh. Like I said, I didn't see a date on this, but I'm assuming this probably either just came out or it's last year's version. I would like another year on it at least because there is a bit of heat there. Um, I don't want to say negative heat because it's absolutely fucking delicious, but... Um, you're going to see it bouncing out over a little bit of time. Now, that aside, I'm getting a lot of what I got in the nose, but it's richer and deeper and more vibrant. You're getting that chocolate in there, but it's it's more of like a uh, fudgy chocolate now, not like a milk chocolate. It's like dip, deep and rich and dark. You're getting that cherry cordial thing that I love. Getting a nice barrel character, the nice char in there. It's almost slightly bittering, but not enough to even put you off in the slightest. Beautiful body to it. It's not going to be confused with the, the thickest body in the history of mankind, but at the same time, it's not going to be confused for thin. And you get in just a subtle kind of like a... Subtle roasted coffee off that sucker, too. Very subtle, though. It's a very well-done beer. This is delicious. I probably like it better than... I probably like it better than Older Viscosity. Same brewery. Um, just that little bit of difference. Maybe that extra emphasis on that. And that, like, like I said last time, I got a little bit of spiciness. Like a Christmas spiciness, that could be just me. Christmas, mine playing tricks with because I don't think they spice this beer. It almost tastes like a little bit of cinnamon. But um, just that little bit of added chocolate and coffee kind of going on in this one maybe does it for me. So yeah, nice marriage of the beer to the barrel. I didn't think it was going to be like that off the nose, even though you got a bit of a beer. I thought it was going to be very barrel leaning. Um, the only, like I said, the only caveat or early, I don't even say negative, but only... Um, thing is that it heats a little bit apparent so this is if this is fresh i'm pretty sure excuse me this is late october so i'm pretty sure this is when this beer comes out in the west coast right around there early november if it's this year's version or last year's version i could use just a little bit more time on it but again absolute just me nitpicking the living shit out of this beer because it is delicious um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, let's talk about it. Not, the whole rating thing, I'm kind of transferring out of that, or transferring, transitioning out of it, um, and just kind of talking about the beer and trying to rate it without giving it a number because I think the arbitrary number letter thing is kind of weird. Um, so let's talk about it. Is this one of the... Am I glad I bought it? I didn't buy it, so yeah, I'm glad I got it. Um, would I pick it up again? Absolutely. Based on the price point, that's the only thing that sucks about Lost Abbey a lot of times. And same thing with um, um, with Port Brewing, same company, is that price point tends to be a bit high. You're talking this is what twelve point what ounces? How much is this? 12.7 12, 12 fluid ounces. So it's 0.7 fluid ounces over twelve ounce beer. Yes, it's barrel aged. I get it, but this is typically this would sell in my area again. I didn't pay for it, but if this hits my area, it's going to sell right around $18 to $20. That sucks. That sucks. I know it's a barrel age, and I know it's a good beer, but you can get 750s, twice the amount of that, for right around the same price point and same quality from other breweries. So that kind of sucks. 
Would I pick, would I buy it, get it again? Yes. Would I buy it again? Yes. Would I be happy or would my asshole be happy about me paying that much for a beard? Eh, it'd pucker a bit, but it'd get over it. Um, uh, is it one of the better beers I've had as of late? Yeah, um, it is. Because I've had a, a lot of really good beers as of late, but the marriage of the barrel to the beer, it is really, really nice. It's something I would definitely encourage people to pick it up. It wouldn't be like a pass. I wouldn't be like, it's nice, and if you kind of like these beers, you might want it. If you like barrel-aged beers, if you like explosive flavor, if you like balance, if you like nothing over the top, this is definitely going to be something you want to pick up because it is really well done. The base beer is really well done. Again, grain of salt. I've only had aged ones. Um, so just that added character of the bourbon barrel just just takes it over the top. And if you like what well, we like this, you know, their whole line, if you like, you know, older viscosity, if you like, you know, tracks, if you like your tracks 10, your track 8, which are the two ones that I think, and we're going Lost Abbey on this, not Port Brewing, same brewery anyway. Um, and your, you know, Angel Shear beers like that, they know what they're doing with a barrel. Do you know what I mean? You obviously know that's going on. So when they throw something in a barrel, you know what the fuck they're, they know what the fuck they're doing, so they're not going to bring out a subpar product. So if you're into those kind of beers and you're into... I would say coffee, chocolate, Ford, Russian Imperial Stouts, and you want to add an added characteristic of bourbon. I haven't really talked that much about the bourbon in there. It's there. It's sweet. That's where I'm getting that cherry cordial from. The booze is more from the EBV. I don't think it's from the actual bourbon. I'm sure part of it is. But um, if you like that kind of added complexity to coffee and chocolate, Ford, Imperial Stouts, Russian Imperials, then you'll definitely do this. So. There you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below and like and subscribe and all that fun, fun stuff. If you want to check us out anywhere else on the internet, you can. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped, Massive Beers, and all four of those places. And yeah, another one down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a beautiful barrel-aged Imperial Stout right now. And... Hopefully see you next time. Cheers.